In the second reading today, St. Paul says to his Christian brothers and sisters in Thessalonica, quote, we always mention you in our prayers and thank God for you all and constantly remember before God our Father how you have shown your faith in action, how you have worked for love and persevered through hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith, love, hope. When you hear St Paul, they sound slightly abstract, don't they? Just, oh, I learned this in catechism, I know, I know, I know, I know. But they become real in the lives of you and me, and especially in the lives of the saints. Last week, I said to you, some of you newcomers were a bit shocked by this, that London is a city of saints. London is a city of saints, which it is. And I spoke about Cardinal Newman, our great saint, patron of our chaplaincy, who walked these very streets. Well, eight days ago, a teenager from London was beatified in Assisi. Blessed Carlo Acutis. Okay. He only lived in London for a few months before he moved with his family to Milan, but he was born here. He was baptised in the Servite Church in Fulham, near where I used to live. Those of you sad enough to support Chelsea, he was baptised just in the shadow of Chelsea football ground there on the Fulham Road. I won't say he walked our streets because he couldn't walk when he flew back to Milan, but he breathed our air, he drank our beautiful London water. He is, in this sense, a Londoner, and he is in heaven now. Carlo Acutis was born on the 3rd of May, 1991. Not long ago, some of you were alive then, some of you students. His parents were Andrea and Antonia. He moved back to Milan in September, and in so many ways, he was just an ordinary teenager. Please look online at the photos of his shrine where he's buried. It's an open glass casket. There he is, his face uncovered. He is wearing a tracksuit sports top, jeans and a pair of Nike trainers. And you can see the Nike swish. I don't know if they paid for this. I'm sure they didn't. Yes, but what product placement? There he is, wearing his ordinary favourite clothes, looking like so many of you when you were 15, and like one or two of you still. He had a passion for computers. He taught himself to code when he was young. He loved playing video games. He was passionate about the PlayStation 2, released in 2000, when he was only nine. But he was aware of the dangers of console overload. And eventually, he limited his computer games time to one hour a week. Great joy in playing it, discipline in not, and giving him more time for others. He loved films and comics, football, action films, Pokemon, animals. He had four dogs, two cats, and too many goldfish to count. He was really, really an ordinary teenager, an ordinary young person. But from a young age, Carlo seemed to have a special love for God, even though his parents weren't specially devout. His mum said he had a natural predisposition to the sacred. It was he who insisted that he took his communion as soon as possible, earlier than normal, age seven. And as he walked into the convent, where he made his first communion, there was a sign above the door that says, God suffices, God is enough for you. He made his, fervent, his first communion and he, he went to mass as often as he could, receiving communion each time. He went to confession once a week. And before he went to mass or after, if he didn't have time, he always tried to make a point of having some prayer time, like a holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament, to help him to prepare for Mass. 
or to give thanks after Mass. How we can learn from this. He said, the more Eucharist we receive, the more we will become like Jesus, so that on this earth we will have a foretaste of heaven. He was just someone who was drawn to the Eucharist and had a deep faith almost without being taught it. He said, quote, the Eucharist is my highway to heaven. Another quote, if we place ourselves before the sun, we get suntans. But when we place ourselves before Jesus in the Eucharist, we become saints. His witness of faith led to a deep conversion in others, in his own family. His mum didn't go to mass much apart from her first communion and her wedding, and she was not devout. She was not a regular mass goer. But as the priest who was promoting his cause said, he managed to drag his relatives, his parents, to mass every day. It was not the other way round. It was not his parents bringing the little boy to mass, but it was he who managed to get himself to mass and to convince others to receive communion daily. And he had a very special love for Eucharistic miracles. You know some of these stories where there's been an extraordinary miracle in history associated with the Eucharist. Well, I spoke about this week, this week, didn't I? The feast of Margaret Mary when Jesus appeared to her in the Holy Eucharist and many, many others, many of them even more extraordinary. He was just fascinated by these miracles. He asked his parents to take him to shrines where he could visit them. He started cataloging them, making lists when he was 11. And when he was 14, he was inspired to start a website to promote Eucharistic miracles and love for the Eucharist. He was inspired by Blessed Giacomo Alberione. I've been to his shrine in Italy. He founded the Society of St. Paul and he wanted to use the media to spread the gospel. And this touched Carlo to do the same. Carlo had a big heart for others. He wasn't just there on his computer. He volunteered at the soup kitchen in Milan. He used his money to help the poor. His mum said that with his savings, he bought sleeping bags for homeless people. And in the evening, he bought them hot drinks. He had a completely different set of priorities to so many of his peers and friends without in any way looking down on them or feeling superior. And he had a real worry when his friends were suffering. He was not alone in knowing lots of friends whose parents were having difficulties and even separating, sadly. And he would often invite those friends back to his family so they could have an experience of being loved and welcomed and to have his friendship. But he was willing to stand out in more hard ways, if you like, he would defend his Catholic faith, including his pro-life views, fierce, fearlessly in the classroom, something that most of us find hard to do, I think. He had an especial heart for those who were disabled, especially if they were bullied at school. He would stand up for them. And he had a great love for the young saints that I hope you know, um, St. Francisco and St. Jacinta from Fatima, St. Dominic Savio, St. Bernadette of Lourdes, and his favourite saint, St. Francis of Assisi, his favourite place to visit. Carlo, it seems, knew that he would die young. He predicted the cause of his death. His mother said, quote, Carlo always had a sense that he couldn't waste time. He contracted leukaemia. He offered his pain for both Pope Benedict XVI, Pope at the time, and for the Universal Church. And he said, I offer all the suffering I have to suffer for the Lord, for the Pope and for the Church. I am happy to die because I have lived my life without wasting a minute on those things which do not please God. Could you say that? I'm happy to die because I have lived my life without wasting a minute on those things which do not please God. 
The doctor treating him asked if he was suffering. And he said, there are people who suffer much more than me. And he said later, I would like to leave this hospital, but I know I will not do so alive. I will give you signs, though, that I am with God. He died age 15 on the 12th of October 2006 of leukemia and was buried in Assisi as he wished. Carlo's mother now, thank God, praise the Lord, full of faith. She attributes to his intercession the fact that at the age of 44, she gave birth to twins after his death. And when were they born? Exactly four years to the day after he died, on the day he died. He was well known, friends and family, and his story became known. There were many calls for him to be beatified soon after he died. He was given the title Venerable, seven years later in 2013. A miracle was affirmed in 2019, so that when his beatification then could be approved fairly easily. And it was only then that his mother said, she didn't say this before to kind of push the story along. It was after his beatification had been announced that his mother said that Carlo had appeared to her in her dreams, informing him that he would be beatified and also canonized a saint in the future. And he was beatified, not yesterday, but the week before on Saturday. There was huge secular media interest it was all over the BBC and CNN and all the, the mainstream media outlets. They were dubbing him patron saint of the internet. We do already have one, but he'd be a nice modern one. And they were calling him the first millennial saint. His mum again said he was chosen by God to be an example for the young people of this period in history. I hope you can see, you students, what an example he is for you. You can be normal and still be a saint. You can be yourself with all your hopes and dreams and passions and still live your life for others. Jesus says in the gospel today, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Carlo lived in Caesar's world, our world, as we do but he put God at the very centre. Look at his love for God. Look at his love for Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. See the time he spent in prayer, his love for his family, for his friends, his longing to help others, especially those who were left out. See the joy he found in living his Catholic faith without fear, or shame or timidity. He was just an ordinary Christian, but ordinary Christianity is a thing so rare today that it looks almost miraculous. The French writer Leon Bloy said, the only real sadness, the only real failure, the only great tragedy in life is not to become a saint. Never forget that your vocation is to be a saint. And besides that, everything else fades into insignificance. Blessed Carlo Acutis, pray for us. Amen.